by now most of you could probably make a pretty solid guess that this cemetery is haunted as fuck. Yeah. Because aren't they all? <laughs> I feel like they tend to be. And you would be totally correct. People that have visited when it wasn't strictly closed to the public or people that have illegally visited say there are whispers, some telling them to leave. Yeah, I mean, do you just not know how to follow directions or... Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Cassie. Hi, creepy people. Hello. Hello. (laughs) She tried to outpace me. (laughs) If you're new to our creepy corner of the world, this is P&W Haunts and Homicides, where we chat about true crime, the paranormal, and all things creepy in the Pacific Northwest, which is what P&W stands for. Definitely does. Yes, that's what it means. We do a tarot reading at the end of every episode for a little deeper insight into whatever we're talking about. So stick around if you're interested in that. Spoopy. And it is about to get real creepy and real spoopy up in here. Let me tell you. Great. It's fine. She had to chug some wine before we started. (laughs) I told her I've been taking it a little light on you guys. And, you know, I had to get a real, real creepy one in here. So here we are. It's almost like I knew this was coming. I've been slowly, I've been like micro dosing spooky. You kind of have, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Okay. So, anyways, you should just move the wine over here, actually. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. <gasps> so, this was a listener suggestion, actually. So, you have them to thank for that, too, our lovely, lovely, creepy listeners. Yeah. Thank you so much. (laughs) I think. I thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I want to start off by saying this place we're about to discuss is absolutely 100% off limits. Okay. You do not go to there. I feel like that goes without saying in my case. I know you, but it is private property and they do not allow visitors. Um, It's kind of speculated that It's because people have vandalized or been disrespectful in the past. Oh, it takes me right back to Dick Road. I know. I wrote that down. So I wanted to be sure I said that right away so no one gets their ghost hunting hopes up. Mm -hmm. You know, Dick Road. Don't be a dick and all that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, so what is this mysterious no-no zone? Uh. Today, we're popping up just right outside of Seattle to a little cemetery in a town called Maltby. Oh, isn't it sound cute? It does. It reminds me of like malt milkshakes and cute little bumblebees. Yeah. Yeah, not so much. Okay, great. Most people know this cemetery as Maltby Cemetery, but it is listed on findagrave.com as Paradise Lake Cemetery. Oh. And you won't find it on Google Maps or even when you click on the directions on Find a Grave. It just takes you to the town of Maltby. What? Although there are coordinates listed, but uh, I don't have time to figure all that out. And (laughs) I don't know how to use that. Also, you're not supposed to be going there. So you don't even need to know exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. Take three rights and a left and then go the fuck home. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The point is it does exist. But it's just, you won't find it in the maps when you search because you're not supposed to go there, so. Okay, fair (laughs) enough. I mean, I believe you. I'm like, I feel like they like wiped the internet clean of like where this place is. (laughs) I don't feel like that's a a good sign, typically. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Okay. One more really quick thing before we get into the story. There are a couple articles that are talking about the same story. They're calling it Maltby Cemetery, but in their listing, they're talking about Woodenville Cemetery. Oh. The towns are right next to each other, um, but that's not the right place. So. Oh, okay. Just so you all know. Yeah. Maltby or Paradise Lake Cemetery has been there since the early 1900s. 
the Doolittle family and <gasps> roughly 24 to 81 of their relatives rest there. Okay. It's a cute name. That's a lot of dead people. So I feel conflicted. <laughs> it is I, such a cute name. I love hate it. They're not all Doolittles buried there, but it's like okay. the family. So there's a bunch of different last names, but they're they yeah. were the main family. And I know 24 to 81 is a bit of a difference. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> most of the articles I found say there's about 40 graves. One death record site said that there was 24. And Find a Grave said that there's 81. Okay. So I'm just giving you all, a, the, all the facts I could find. Bit of a spread. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's one of those numbers maybe takes into account people that were buried like together. Oh, maybe. Because I feel like that used to be more common. I did see a picture of one of the gravestones and it had like a split where there uh, were two different names on it. Mm -hmm. So it's possible. But a good chunk of the ones on findagrave.com, they didn't have a birth or death date or a photo of the headstone. So I'm not sure if they're actually buried there or if the headstones just have been lost to time or vandalism. It's impossible to say. Cool. Yeah. Casual. We love unmarked graves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the cemetery was never really supposed to be open to the public. I don't know that information for certain, but I assume back in the day, they didn't expect people to just visit cemeteries that didn't have anyone they know buried there. Yeah. So it's kind of weird that we do that now. Correct. <laughs> it feels like to me that this was just meant to be the family plot, although it might not have been specified as private back then. There just wasn't a need. Right. Like, but it sure is now, and you bet your bottom I'm going to tell you why. Okay. By now, most of you could probably make a pretty solid guess that this cemetery is haunted as fuck. Yeah. Because aren't they all? <laughs> I feel like they tend to be. And you would be totally correct. People that have visited when it wasn't strictly closed to the public or people that have illegally visited say there are whispers. Okay. People have even caught EVPs, some telling them to leave. Yeah. I mean, do you just not know how to follow directions or you have like, you're, you're specifically like an oppositional person or? I don't think they left. Yeah. I probably not. <laughs> probably not. Why does nobody do what the ghost <laughs> tells them to do? Leave. <laughs> Orbs have been spotted, as well as the apparitions of a woman either looking for her child or a woman and child are seen together in tattered clothing. Okay. I don't really care for that. You know how we feel about child ghosts? Ghost children. Mm, no. Mm -mm. Creepy and sad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apparently, there is quite a special headstone in Maltby Cemetery, although it's of course, not specified which one. Neato. <laughs> <laughs> but this headstone will appear and be really small on your first pass by all of the graves. And when you go back the way you came past all of those same graves again, and you look for that small headstone that you saw before, you won't be able to find it. Okay, that's fine. But instead... <laughs> No. <laughs> like it scarfed down some Alice in Wonderland eat me cake. It will all of a sudden be a huge monument. Okay. Um, <sighs> it's funny you mention Alice in Wonderland. Oh, is it? Uh, well, yeah, because I'm thinking, was that just cake? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I have a theory on this, but we'll need the rest of the story first. Oh, good. So okay. we'll we'll get to that later because, oh, yeah, Kool-Aid man, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there used to be a gate at the entrance, but it has either fallen down or been taken down. Ooh. But there are still pillars left. And these pillars are overgrown by now. Oh, that's really ominous. It though. is kind of ominous. I don't like that. Yeah. So people refer to it as the gates of hell. Great. 
And you know what? I believe they're correct. I don't need to see it. That's a wrap. You don't even have the full story yet. Nope. Don't need it. I just know I'm never going. I just feel like cemeteries get a bad rep, you know? Yeah. Like, it's a cemetery. It's not the gates of hell. Or is it? It's where you honor your dead loved ones. Okay. (laughs) But like, do I have to? Yes. You're not the boss of me. (laughs) Now, this could just be it's an old spooky cemetery or it could be because of what this cemetery is most well known for. I already hate it. Is the suspense killing you or what? I'm dead. I had a lot of fun writing this. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay, everyone, turn off your lights. No. I'll get my flashlight up under my chin. (laughs) (laughs) Why is that a thing? I don't know. And I literally wrote that down. And I was like, why is that a thing? Oh, God, no, I can't go on another tangent. <laughs> it really is a thing, though. And yeah. I think it's because like in the woods, it illuminates your yeah. face. Like you look spookier like. with the underlight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, it gives you like multiple chins. So zero out of 10. I already have recommend. those. You can see them in the, in the normal light. <laughs> <laughs> It is said that somewhere under the grounds of Maltby Cemetery is a crypt of a wealthy family. Stories even claim this family were Satanists, but all agree they were definitely well-to-do. Okay. Probably because they have a super casual private tomb. Yeah. Yeah. There are 13 steps descending into the bougie burial chamber. And these People refer to as the 13 steps to hell. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. More hell. More hell. Okay. Are you scared? Uh, this is fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. I can totally swallow my own spit and breathe, and I'm not sweating at all. She hasn't burped, not once. <laughs> That's a dang old lie. (laughs) If anyone was paying attention to the episode number and the date, then they know why I had to talk about this for episode 113. And it's a total bonus that it's coming out on June 13th. You bitch. (laughs) I claimed it. It actually wasn't going to work out to come out on the 13th. But then we had an extra episode. We rearranged some things and then it magically fit. And I was like, well, it's obviously meant to be. And here we are. Yay. (laughs) Okay, but I'm done (laughs) nerding out about numbers for just a second anyway. Okay. Because we'll come back to numbers. I was so excited about numbers last night. And now I feel like you've kind of ruined it. I'll fix it for you. Don't worry. Okay, great. I like to have a nice, you know, rounded episode, scary a little bit, and then we'll come back to reality. Mm, Okay. Turns out people don't have the best experiences descending these 13 steps to hell. You don't say. (laughs) (laughs) When your little tootsies finally touch the final step, step 13, you will see hell itself. No, thank you. That's right. The underworld, the pit, the inferno, the land of the dead, H-E double hockey sticks itself. (laughs) That's my favorite. (laughs) Isn't it fun? Yeah. And I just got to say, I know Caitlin's uncomfortable. I don't think I'm very comfortable with hell being only 13 steps down. Yeah. That's not great. It's like real close. You could honestly trip and that's a real possibility for me. Yeah. Some might say even highly probable. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know why I keep talking about things that Caitlin could like trip and fall into like Mel's hole. (laughs) Now these 13 steps. Yeah. I'm feeling a little targeted. Um, It's fine. I did take you to Silver Falls too. Yeah. Y'all better watch out. (laughs) (laughs) For me. It's me. It's me. (laughs) Some do say that it's just a vision of hell, not like you're actually in hell, but still. Yeah. So there are reports of people saying they couldn't make it down all 13 steps. Yeah, same. Like, oh, no, I twisted my ankle. Oh, no, I got to go back up. (laughs) Yep. Okay, bye. 
or they witness someone else who couldn't make it. They say when you're trying to look down the stairs that you can't see what's at the bottom. And even if you shine a flashlight down there, you still can't see. If you throw something down, it will vanish. And I totally forgot I put this next part in and it says, this sounds kind of Mel's holish to me. (laughs) (laughs) It does. It just being like dark down there. Like, why would you go? Why would you go down there? I, you know, I don't know. Were you cast as um, a teenage basic white girl (laughs) in a horror film? Because you're probably going to go down there. Probably. Which is, I mean, the singular least relatable stereotype that I'm aware of. It's funny you bring that up too. Great. But we'll talk about that later. Awesome. Then when you start to descend, I just love that word, the descent. (laughs) It's all like tying together. So when you start to descend, you will no longer be able to hear the goings on of the world above. I really hate it. No. You might feel your senses heighten, heart pounding, knees weak, palms sweaty, mom spaghetti. (laughs) (laughs) How is that different from this moment? It's not. Okay, great. You might even feel a force either gently encouraging you down the stairs or making you freeze midway or even at the 12th step. Yeah. I think that's your fear doing that. I don't think that's an outside source. Okay. One person made it only five steps before screaming, take me to church. Oh my God. Take me to church. That's what I was singing the whole time. I was like, I hope he sang it. How much of that song can we play before we get sued? I don't know. But what happens if you do make it down to the final step and see hell? Well, you go insane, of course. Yeah. And we're not friends anymore. (laughs) Well, you could possibly even be catatonic for the rest of your life or just plain vanish and go missing forever. Sounds fun. Mm, yeah, I, I'm i all down for doing things, but I, there's some things I don't I'll, need to. I'll be honest. I'm not down for doing things <laughs> and definitely not this. There is a blog post that talks about various missing persons being reported and nothing ever being done about it, which, you know, kind of sounds like something the cops would do. But maybe, I don't know, maybe Caitlin can help me fact check this. I don't know how to search for missing persons records. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can, we'll, we'll chat offline. Okay. Okay. We'll do another episode on it. Uh, (laughs) Maybe. Depends on what we find, doesn't it? (laughs) I kind of don't want to know. I didn't look into it on purpose. (laughs) Okay. I hate it. There has also been a few instances where people have had car trouble or car accidents near the cemetery. Someone also said there was a bunch of old car wrecks that were left behind, but I feel like that's probably not true. I don't think they would just leave a bunch of old cars abandoned on some private property. Like, I feel like they would. I don't know. It depends, like, how reclusive is. um, It's kind of like in a a natural area. What are those called? Like a a preserve? Yeah. It's in one of those. Well, so I guess I it's possible. Yeah, I maybe. Know. I was just going to say, because at that point, it becomes sort of a coin toss. Like, I don't want these abandoned vehicles on my property, but I have to bring more people onto this yeah. private property where I don't want more people. Maybe it's a to warning come. to stay away. Right? Message received. <laughs> It could also be, I wonder if there's maybe just a property back there that has like a bunch of junk, a bunch of junk yeah, cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a valid option as well. We should go exploring. Just kidding. It's private. I'm kidding. God, it was Cassie. Joke. It was a joke. Allegedly. <gasps> okay. Do you remember I said I had a crazy theory about the magically growing headstone? Yeah. What if that is the entrance? To the 13 steps. Like, what if you have to do this, pass all the graves, let it grow, and then the steps appear? 
Oh, another okay. mystery solved by Cassie. Hello, yeah. you're welcome. <laughs> if only you used your powers for good. This is good. Now people know how to not make it appear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great theory, though. I I agree. I don't think I didn't see anybody else come up with that theory. I just want to put that out there that that yeah. is 100 percent original as far as I know in my brain. <laughs> I mean, if you didn't read it somewhere else, it's original for you. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't guarantee that nobody else has ever had that thought. Right, right, right. No, like, no, no, no. Not that's that. Fair. But yeah, I mean, it's original for you. Mm-hmm. I actually kind of love that theory. Me too. Yeah. I think we started a new thing. I don't yeah. know. Can we start another new thing? Not talking about ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Something something like in that neighborhood. You know, like no ghost adjacent, maybe. I don't know. Well, we're, we're switching now. We're not going to talk about ghosts anymore. Cool. Is it demons now? Is no. that? Okay. No, it gets better I was from like, here. There's always a catch. <laughs> <laughs> it gets better from here. So as we're recording this today, Saturday, not Tuesday when it's releasing, but it is a full moon tonight. Mm -hmm. Is it? I think it's the strawberry moon. Or was that the last moon? I don't know. We can can... do a quick fact check on that. As indie podcasters, we love to show our support of other awesome shows. So stay tuned for the promo we've got to share with you this week. Let's show them some love. You can find their info in our show notes. Crime, murder, some shots, and of course, ghosts. So when we were finally doing it for this one and I was able to dig into it, it's it's crazy. I didn't even go through the whole entire list of different uh, happenings that have taken place here. All this and more is what's in store for season two of the Haunted Happy Hour podcast with the the hauntings of the farm. Oh, yeah. You said people can still go here. So you can can you go tour the place? then? Oh, yeah, totally. You can actually look up the website if you loved season one. Well, then you're going to love season two even more. The chocolate, though, you know what it reminds me of? Hmm. I don't know if you remember back in school, we used to get the scented stickers oh from my the gosh. teachers. The scratch and sniff yes. ones. <laughs> it tastes how that smells. Yes. yes yeah. I know exactly what you mean. So when I tried it, this, I'm like, oh, my God, it takes me back to elementary school. Oh, my gosh. You're right. Circa late 80s. <gasps> This tastes like scratch and sniff stickers. <laughs> the chocolate kind. <laughs> With stories full of twists and turns and exciting new adventures coming your way, you don't want to miss this season. It's exciting that we had somebody um, reach out to us and that kind of really got us into it. Yeah, it kind of like sparked some conversation. Right. And uh, we just wanted to share our thoughts with everybody. I will say there's no denying that they did do a lot for the paranormal field just in general. You know, they I feel like and I'm sure a lot of people out there will agree that they pretty much were the ones to put that focus on the paranormal field. Like they exposed so many people to Mm -hmm. the paranormal who otherwise would not have known it, you know, with all the the movies that were based on their cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a big deal. So join us in the Spirit Lounge for another happy hour right here on the Haunted Happy Hour podcast. You guys, we're We're back. back. And don't worry, we did get more wine. Well, of course. June's full moon, also known as the strawberry moon, rises tonight, June 3rd, and will flaunt its glory throughout the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. The full strawberry moon of June share the sky with Mars and a half Venus tonight. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah. Huh. Remember that. Okay. So since it's the full moon tonight, I wanted to read this very fitting comment from a Facebook post of this story. This is the last spooky thing I I forgot, but it's not that bad. Okay. So I'm doing just their initials. So PF in 2022 said, I went there once on a full moon with friends. Never again, exclamation point. And then GW responded, not the GW, okay? I was going to say, he said (laughs) strategery. He said strategery. (laughs) Fool me once. (laughs) You're you're not going to fool me again. (laughs) Oh my God, I cannot get enough of that man. I don't know what it is. Okay. You know, he's like a child. (laughs) He's like a child, like, wonder about the world. paintings are just, okay. Anyway. So GW said in 2023, Yeah, I went there in the early 2000s before it got blocked off. I'm not a conspiracy guy, but we aren't being told everything. Good luck. Please don't contact me back. And then he put like the thank you praying hands. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So what aren't we being told? I don't know. Mr. Not a conspiracy man. Yeah. (laughs) I mean... (laughs) That's kind of like when you say with all due respect and then say like, oh, fuck you. Right. Like, (laughs) um, contradictory. So I don't know, GW, (laughs) if you want to come on and tell us uh, what's going on in Maltby Cemetery, we'd love to hear it. So that's pretty much all of the story. But I wanted to touch on some things, just, you know, feel some things out. Specifically, the number 13 and why people think it's so evil and have all these superstitions about it. I know there are some people out there like me that love the number and think it's lucky. I actually know a couple who I think they met or their first date was on a Friday the 13th. So like every Friday the 13th, they celebrate their anniversary. Oh, cute. Yeah, isn't that cute? But I feel like overall society isn't a fan. And there's proof of that with like hotels and other buildings not labeling a 13th room or floor. True. I guess even some airplanes don't have a 13th row, Uh, which is interesting. (laughs) And if you fly on Friday the 13th, you're bound to get a pretty decent rate. Oh my God. That is such a good point. I think we should do it next Friday the 13th. Let's go on a trip. It it happens one to three times a year. It does. Mm Mm-hmm. October 13th, 2023. Ooh. September 13th, 2024. And December 13th of 2024. Wow. That's also Taylor Swift's birthday, December 13th. Hey. Is that? Oh my God. Hey, Tay Tay. Tay Tay. She oh. also loves the number 13 and puts it in like everything. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, I Wait. thought that was interesting. They said there was either, there's at least one, but no more than three. That's another 13. <laughs> I mean, there could be two, but like at least one, no more than three. Weird. Weird. Everything is so weird and it's going to get a lot weirder. Okay. Because I'm not done. I got two more pages. Oh my God. (laughs) The flight thing brings me to our good pal FDR, which I don't know how he keeps coming up on the podcast, but it's happening. He's fucking everywhere. (laughs) He is. What is his deal? I think his ghost just like likes our show and wants to like be on it. Why are you so obsessed with me? I, it's weird, FDR. He was well known for saying, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. <laughs> Just kidding. That was Michael Scott. <laughs> I was like, mm, I don't think You're like, so. No, I think you need to fact check that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. So FDR was known for saying, if 13 people unwittingly dine together, the first to rise will certainly be condemned to misfortune. Great. So he wouldn't like have 13 people at the table. Okay. He would also not travel on Friday the 13th. I mean, yeah, same. So he is like part of the reason that we get to save money on that day. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole list of bad things that have happened on this date in history that lend to the superstition. And of course, the movie Friday the 13th which I just so happen to be wearing today. Yeah. Because your girl loves a theme. I mean, but who dat? Because I don't, I don't do that. Friday I don't the fucks 13th? with that shit. 
Yeah, it's Jason. Is Jason it? Voorhees. Yeah. Okay. Camp Crystal Lake. Mm-hmm. It's also interesting you mentioned that. Oh. <laughs> so let's keep going. I hate it. <laughs> okay. So why? Why 13? What is so wrong with this number? Well, most people think it has to do with the Bible and the patriarchy because that's literally the problem of everything in this I mean, world. Yeah. I knew you wouldn't disagree with me. Yeah. <laughs> That feels right. So I guess there was something about this dude that crashed this dinner party. Oh, and there was shit. Only 12 guests there. Yeah. And if you can do the math, that would make him guess 13. His name was like Judas or something. I don't know. Apparently nobody liked this guy. Yeah, that <laughs> is soups awkward. And if y'all didn't catch on, uh, that was the famous Jesus dinner party. The last. The last one. The last supper. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm naturally. a really terrible uh, <laughs> Catholic, but I do know that. I know that one. <laughs> I know, I know almost one. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell by my description, <laughs> I watch Jesus Christ Superstar. And <laughs> so we all know the Christians back in this day hated witches with a fiery passion. Yeah. I mean, one could even say puritanical. 13 is a sacred number to witches. There are 13 full moons to celebrate each year. Yeah. One of them is tonight. Ah. And covens of old were said to have 12 members, leaving room for the 13th member being whoever they were worshiping. Ooh. We now know this is most likely a goddess and not the flipping devil, as yeah. everyone would like you to think. We don't have enough time in this particular episode to explain why this is utter nonsense. But basically, it was one of those practices that witches did that the patriarchy and the religions and all of the people <laughs> that were involved in making all of these stupid rules flipped and turned into a bad thing to villainize women and witchcraft. And we just don't subscribe to that anymore. So. No, they just demonize things that they, they don't, don't like, like and they don't want you to do. And they don't like women. <laughs> I hate them rules, too. Sorry. They're stupid. Yeah. They're just stupid. Unless it's like a no trespassing rule. I don't like rules. Yeah. Unless it's for protection. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I think in a weird way, my brain is sort of wired to respect rules that make sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The but the novelty seeking part of my brain is like that rule doesn't even make sense. Yeah. And it seems like it would be so much fun to just, I don't know, fuck it. Right. Unless, you know, you think it makes sense to like murder somebody. Like, don't break that That's rule. That's not a good one. That don't, makes sense. But. Don't start or end there. Yeah. No thanks. Also, Friday is the day of the planet Venus, which is closely associated with femininity and women. And when I say femininity and women, I always mean everyone that identifies as such. Does not matter. I don't need to know what you got. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter if you, we don't ask if you're questions. feminine. That's rude. Venus is for you. So either way, get off our shit. It's not evil. Friday and the 13th just... They seem like lucky, happy, fun days to me. So, okay. So do you remember I mentioned that people think that this wealthy family were Satanists? Yeah. So that could be because there are Freemason symbols on some of the headstones in the cemetery. And it's speculated that some people might confuse that for something Satanic. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> But spoiler alert, Freemasons aren't Satanists. Satanists aren't witches. And all of them are different. None of them are evil. Yeah. That's like my overview of all of that. Yeah. Before we finish up, when I was looking on the map for the cemetery, I did find something a little interesting. You could call it a coincidence. You can call it a synchronicity, whatever you want. But Caitlin... I originally was going to ask you how much you know about the movie Friday the 13th, but I don't have to ask that now. So would you please open the picture I sent you? No. It's not a scary pop-up. Okay. I don't like you, but... Will you tell me the name of the lake? 
that is next to the cemetery? Stop it. Are you <laughs> kidding me? That was my exact reaction. <laughs> Crystal Lake? Mm-hmm. Do you remember the camp <laughs> from the movie that you just read? <laughs> I hate you and Wikipedia and IMDb and Friday the 13th, the movie. That worked out so perfectly that you, because I knew you probably weren't going to know, but that worked out so perfectly. It's even more of a synchronicity, I feel like now. I, how weird, how weird that I just (laughs) decided to talk about Friday the 13th. In this episode, it's Camp Crystal Lake, the lake next to the cemetery is Crystal Lake. I can't. I can't, you guys. You will have to pacify me with much wines. I will. I will. I brought you a whole bottle. Yeah. Just one, though. And I'm afraid <laughs> it's not going to be enough. <laughs> just kidding. <sighs> so, should we do some tarot? Yeah. I'm really excited to see Yay. what we get. Oh, God. <laughs> Because this has been so, like, freaky already, so. Sure has. All righty. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Okay. But you can see my pretty dress that I got at Curiosities. Oh, did you? Yeah, like, the first time I ever went with you. And I was like, I need, like, I need this. Hello. Hello. And this is the first time I'm wearing it. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, we'll have to post a picture because my mic is conveniently right in the middle of mine, but hers is good too. Yeah. It's pretty cute. Is it from Curiosities though? It is not. It is from Smart Ass and Sass. Okay. That's pretty good too. It's on brand. I got the Ace of Wands in reverse. Oh, okay. Interesting. There is, in this deck, it's the Stranger Things deck, and they're called Strands. This is the Ace of Strands. And there's four Christmas lights on it, and one is lit, and three are not. So, you know, 13. (laughs) (laughs) I had to get there somehow, you know what I mean? But it works. One's lit, three are not. So our Ace of Wands keywords are opportunity, inspiration, adventure, creativity, and a new start. Oh, a new start for the number 13? Maybe. I mean, if anyone can do it, it's me and Taylor Swift. Yeah, you guys (laughs) got this. (laughs) Aces signify beginnings. They also represent focused energy and clear singular intent, which I feel like sums up what you just said. Right. In the Rider Waite Smith Tarot and some other decks, the Ace of Wands shows a disembodied hand emerging from a cloud, grasping a stick from which new shoots grow. Three new shoots? Uh, yeah, actually. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so the Ace of Wands, the picture really is oh. kind of the embodiment of 13 because it's one wand with three shoots. Wow. Yeah. And that does kind of match the the yeah. Christmas light. The message, here's an opportunity. Grab it. Some decks picture only a wand, often one that's large and elaborate, like a ruler's scepter or a witch's ceremonial tool. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even put that together. It's a wand. And we talked a lot about witches. Yeah, Yeah. we did. The reverse interpretation, delays and complications have stalled an endeavor and you feel frustrated or impatient. As a result, you may question yourself and your ability. You might have to rethink your plans and make adjustments or perhaps sit back and wait for a better time. In a reading about money, this card suggests consolidating your finances and focusing on what's essential, like your underground crypt. (laughs) (laughs) Curb spending. Don't overextend yourself now. In a reading about work, it can mean an enthusiastic start fizzled or met with obstacles. You don't have to give up, 
but you may need to put in some extra effort or reassess the situation. That is not about anyone who is trying to go visit. Do not keep. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure you can probably ask for permission. So maybe take that maybe. route and yeah. don't struggle through the. Yeah. Whatever it said that you're going to come yeah. up against. <laughs> don't struggle through the obstacles. Yeah, the obstacle. In a reading about love, the ace reverse suggests an enjoyable relationship may be short lived. Perhaps you approached an affair wearing rose-colored glasses and now see it's not what you really want. This card may also mean the initial passion in a romance is dwindling. I think the romance is the 13 steps. Uh, (laughs) So people are going there wanting to go down the steps. They have rose-colored glasses on. I'm not going to see him. But you will. And then they do. And you'll hate it. And I don't like it. And don't do that. But H-E double hockey sticks, man. (laughs) (laughs) This week, we have several more Patreon shout outs. We have enough subscribers to keep at this for a little bit, you guys. Which, um, holy balls. All the balls. That is amazing. We have Robert to start things off at the Creepy People tier. He's joined by a few friends at the $1 tier. Cody, Gail, and Nick. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Oh, wait. Hold on. You guys thought that was it? <laughs> oh, Caitlin got you good. <laughs> We've also got Jeff, Selsa. Audrey, Ryan, and Dana to round out the $1 tier. But wait, there's more. Oh my God, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, we'll end our shout outs this week with Craig, who's been supporting the show at the $5 tier as a tarot biddy for just over a year now. I love that these people have been here so long. I know. Oh, I love it. One last thing. We just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you for being so amazing. Each of our shout outs this week is for a subscriber that joined us in the month of May for our anniversary last year. I yes. love it. Help to celebrate. Yeah. Seriously, you guys, you made the end of year one of this show amazing. For us specifically. Yeah. (laughs) Hopefully you too. (laughs) Yeah. We can't thank you enough. And we're super excited for everything we're looking forward to now as we enter our third year. Oh, (laughs) interesting. Yeah. (laughs) We're entering our third year and we're talking about, oh, wow. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Everything ended up ones and threes today. Yeah. If you would like your very own personal shout out coming out of our mouth holes right into your ear holes, you can join our Patreon. If somehow you have managed to reside entirely under a rock at this stage, maybe you're new to the show. That's okay. We love you. Um, Join us. The Patreon, though, so you know, is a monthly subscription with a range of price points and benefits. You also get a welcome card when you sign up. That is true. But it comes with a mini tarot reading. Oh, right. And stickers and chats. I knew there was more. Also, you'll get exclusive bonus episodes and so much more. If you can't support us monetarily, no worries whatsoever because the easiest ways to support, they're free. Absolutely free. Totally free. Free 99. (laughs) Tell everyone and anyone you come into contact with about us. Um, I don't know. Should we start mailing the Patreon like a stack of business cards? Is that? (laughs) Yeah, just like spread our business cards all over your town. Perfect. Or you can leave us a five-star review on any platform where you're listening. Or, I mean, all of them. Just... Just go to all of them. Yeah, why not? Yeah. What else are you doing? You're you're probably pooping right now, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually washing dishes, but 
that's what she calls pooping, you guys, whenever she says she's doing the dishes. <laughs> that is not true. As all of you who've listened now for a while, well, no, I do not poop. It's one of my superpowers. Mm-hmm. There's some signs in your bathroom that would say otherwise. Anyway, <laughs> those belong to Chris. And if you have any true crime, paranormal, or witchy stories to submit for our listener appreciation episodes, aka Creepy People Chronicles, yes. please email us at PNW Haunts and Homicides at gmail.com. Or if that's too many words and too many letters and far too difficult to spell. And you can't copy and paste. Also that, you can use our handy Google contact link in the episode description because it's also there. So do that thing. You're always welcome to remain anonymous or we can read your first name if you'd like. And remember, any stories don't have to be from the Pacific Northwest, even though it's in the show title. The Creepy People Chronicles is listener-based episodes, so you guys live everywhere and anywhere. We want all of the stories. It's true. From you. I've checked the analytics. You live all over the place. All over. Follow us on all of the socials if you don't want to miss out on photos of the tarot cards, our altar setups. I mean, I only spend like 30 minutes on average setting them up each week. It's fine, though. (laughs) and also there's backstage shenanigans if you're I don't know into that whatever you get to see pictures of our outfits you know if we're wearing themey shirts or dresses that day yeah it's true we do that sometimes I make weird faces all the time Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm You can find our website and link tree in the description of this episode to check out all of the fun we have to offer How annoying was that? Pretty annoying. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. Perfect. We're keeping it. (laughs) I mean, it's sort of like a love-hate thing. Like, I like it ironically. Yeah. I mean, I was being annoying on purpose. Hopefully everyone can tell. So like you're you're ironically annoying. I ironically like it. Perfect. That's what I was going for. Is that that a thing? (laughs) I love it. Let's never change. (laughs) If you would like us to never change, (laughs) check out our website. Have Have a creepy creepy ass day. day. See you next Tuesday. Unless we burn the house down. Unless you and then it it might be a little longer. (laughs) Unless you make it down thirteen steps to hell. Oh, and vanish and or go insane. Okay, neither of these scenarios is good. I don't want any of the creepy people to do that. There are some people I could think of that it would be okay, but... Okay, we'll make a list right after this. Okay. Okay. I live my life like Ted Lasso, a goldfish. (laughs) I still haven't seen it. Oh my God, dude. It. (sighs) I will. Holy shit. So fucking good. Really? It's just so fucking good. Dude, you have to watch it. I just was busy watching the Anna Nicole Smith documentary. (laughs) So. Well, this will be a lot more cheerful. Yeah, it was really sad. And it reminded me of the ghost, the sex demon episode. Because remember, she had a story with the ghost sex. And I was like, you know, I don't know a lot about her life. But now I do, you guys. Yeah. It's sad. It's upsetting.